All right, this is Rendowney Stained Glass coming to you live, just sharing with you how we make our social distancing snowman. So a lot of people have asked about uh, what the lines on the glass are. They're not cuts, they're actually just lines from Sharpies because we use a template to get the shape. Try to get as many in a, on a piece of glass as possible so as not to waste glass and then we cut the glass apart white glass is notor notoriously difficult to work with but we're going to show you anyway The cutter makes a score in the glass, and then by tapping on it, you're deepening that score, and it's causing the glass to break. So once we have them apart, then we've got to separate the head from the body, and that's usually the most delicate part, because glass likes to break on a straight line. So we're going to hope that this breaks nicely, but if not, see, you saw one that didn't break nicely. See, it wanted to break on a straight line. So we'll modify that one, and we'll go back to this one and try it again. So we've got our two pieces, and then all of that excess will have to be cut away. Hi, Kelly. So the excess is cut away, but you see it's not a perfect circle, so we've got to grind that to make it nice and smooth. We'll get the body and then we'll show you how we grind it. Because grinding is the next step in this process. Not bump and grind, but grinding the glass. What you didn't see was a disapproving look from my partner in crime. Okay, so we have two pieces that look pretty rough. So we come over to a grinder. She's got a, a diamond crusted Hi, Chessa. diamond crusted bit on it. Water is applied to it through a sponge. And so you see we grind it until it looks like that. We make a mark on it so that we know after we foil it where the body and the head match perfectly. So you can see that these two are foiled and the foiling process is pretty simple. Notice the spool of foil is on our foiler. Every piece is foiled because the copper foil allows the solder to adhere to each other. Once the foil is adhered, this part is called burnishing. You want to make sure that the foil, the foil has an adhesive back, and you want to make sure that that's nice and smooth. 
and it adheres everywhere. So you can see how the head's done, the body's next, and it'll end up like that one. So once we, <clears throat> once we solder them, they'll look like that. And we put a ring on the back so it can be, it can be hung, that's soldered right into the the seam. And then Nancy goes about putting on the buttons and the eyes. And then she's got a bunch of uh, vinyl adhesive paper and then she cuts masks out of those. And then she adheres the masks to the snowmen, puts the date on them. Some people want names on there as well. And then the hat. And the last step is to put a piece of ribbon to hang through the back loop. And it is ready to be a Christmas tree ornament. And there you go. So from beginning to end, that's what it, it looks like. Right now we have over 140 orders for snowmen, so it's gonna keep us busy for a long time. We do appreciate everybody who has ordered because $10 for each of these snowmen will be donated to Grace. And so hopefully we'll have about a $1,500 check going to Grace for the snowmen. Local charity. Grace is a local charity. Okay. Any questions before we sign out and get back to work? Putting a glue dot. Hey, Sherry Hankins. Nancy uses a glue dot to make sure that the hat stays in place. And there it is. And so every hat is somewhat different and unique. We've got some other hats. Some black, red, green. In fact, we're kind of at the end of our red fabric. We we're waiting for that to be delivered because most of the orders have been for red. So that's it. So thanks for joining us, and um, we'll talk to you later. We'll get back to work now. Bye.